In the last six months, there has been a lot of controversy around the proposed EU bill, accused of being anti-democratic, misleading, as well as even going against EU's own fundamental laws, and in the process of trying to pass this bill using disinformation methods that are going against the very foundations of a democratic society. All this hidden behind the noble message of protecting the children, masking the underlying implications of such a law. Big statements, right? To understand this better, we need to take a closer look at the proposal in question, namely Chat Control 2.0. With the stated aim to prosecute child sexual exploitation material, or CSAM for short, and serves to force providers to search all private chats, messages and emails automatically for suspicious content. The method affects digital communication apps such as WhatsApp, iMessage, Instagram, TikTok and X turning them into mass surveillance tools so that digital communications of all EU citizens, including their live conversations, photos and videos, can be automatically scanned for criminal offences, including citizens who are not suspected of any crime. This proposal for a CSAM regulation has been unanimously condemned by hundreds of academics, privacy regulators and even internal legal experts at the Council of the European Union itself for its gross violation of privacy rights. But also because the technologies proposed to be used are fundamentally flawed. The technology that is being proposed involves automated machine searches for known and unknown images and videos suspicious messages and files, as well as potential grooming, which will all be reported to the police. Previous data on scanning for known images shows the limited accuracy of this, where according to the Swiss Federal Police, 80% of the reports they receive, usually based on the method of hashing, are criminally irrelevant. Similarly, in Ireland, only 20% of NCMEC reports received in 2020 were confirmed as actual child abuse material. Just as flawed, automated searching for unknown abuse representations is an experimental procedure using machine learning or artificial intelligence. Firstly, the algorithms being used are not accessible to the public and the scientific community, nor does the draft include any disclosure requirement. The error rate is unknown because, simply, this technology hasn't been around long enough to give any conclusive findings. Presumably, these technologies will result in massive amounts of false reports and in the current version of the bill allows them to be directly sent to the local police without humans checking them. Artificial intelligence cannot accurately detect criminal activity, but will falsely report millions of innocent citizens as suspects. Meanwhile, criminals can easily circumvent this system by deleting these apps from their phones or disappearing on the dark web. While ineffective, the proposal will mean an end to private digital conversations and, for obvious reasons, is incompatible with the right to privacy and freedom of communication and the presumption of innocence. Which brings us to how it breaks EU's own laws. Leaked internal documents showed that the EU's legal counsel stating that it would require general and indiscriminate screening of the data processed by a specific service provider and apply without distinction to all the persons using that specific service, without those persons being even indirectly in a situation liable to give rise to criminal prosecution. Furthermore, the screening of audio or written communications in order to detect solicitation of children would necessarily require age assessment and or verification generalized to all users of the service concerned. In fact, without establishing the precise age of all users, it would not be possible to know that the alleged solicitation is directed towards a child. Such process would have to be done either by mass profiling of the users, biometric analysis of the user's face and or voice, or by digital identification or certification system. Implementation of any of these measures by the providers of communication services would necessarily add another layer of interference with the rights and freedoms of the users. It follows from the above that the application of detection orders to intrapersonal communications as proposed would entail a particularly serious interference with fundamental rights. As stated by FN's Human Rights Council open letter about this proposal, this increases the risk of self-censorship and the silencing of political opponents, journalists and human rights activists. There, other consequences are also highlighted, such as the risk of data leaks and the risk of abuse, which is a direct consequence of enforcing these limitations to end-to-end -end encryption. The same sentiment is shared by Apple's Director of User Privacy and Child Safety. 
Eric Nounswander, who, according to Wired states, after collaborating with an array of privacy and security researchers, digital rights group and child safety advocates, the company concluded that it could not proceed with development of a CSAM scanning mechanism, even one built specifically to preserve privacy. Scanning every user's privately stored iCloud data would create new threat vectors for data thieves to find and exploit. It would also inject the potential for a slippery slope of unintended consequences. Scanning for one type of content, for instance, opens the door for bulk surveillance and would create a desire to search other encrypted messaging systems across content types. We concluded it was not practically possible to implement without ultimately imperiling the security and privacy of our users. Patrick Breyer, who sits on the European Parliament's Civil Liberties Committee, said the EU should drop the plans, which he labelled as dystopian and claimed would tie up law enforcement and tech companies in chasing down false reports of criminal content. When it comes to arguments supporting the proposal, a lot of the information is ranging from misleading to plainly being false. One of the most striking examples comes from a key proponent and person in charge of the proposal, Ulva Johansson. The following is from an interview in the Swedish newspaper Svenska Dagbladet regarding private messengers. Ulva suggests that we are already scanning encrypted messages on secure messengers. In this case talking about the app Signal. If you're on Signal and you want to send me a link to an interesting article, when you start typing the address of the article, a picture of the article pops up, and that's because they're scanning the conversation. There, meaning Signal is scanning the conversation. Firstly, a link preview is only generated when you copy and paste a link and hit enter. Secondly, this preview is generated locally on the device. Signal is in no way, shape or form scanning the messages and analyzing the content and have no ability to monitor the content. The source code to all this is public and if she wanted, she could review it to see how it works. But even that isn't necessary, as a basic understanding of the principles behind encrypted messengers is more than enough to see how this is plain wrong. Another quote of hers. It's about sniffing, checking out you could say. It's not as if you read a communication. I mean, it's like a police dog being able to smell if there's something there. She's comparing it to smelling a bag in the airport, but not seeing what's in the bag. It's not possible to sniff end-to-end -end encrypted communication without looking at the encrypted communication. Either third parties have access to the content, or they don't. This scanning has been going on for around 10 years, and there are incredibly few cases where someone has been falsely reported. First of all, this type of detection has not been going on for 10 years, as end-to-end -end decrypted traffic has not been targeted before. And secondly, a widespread system for AI to assess whether images and videos are criminal, or whether conversations are grooming or not, simply hasn't existed. Another important point of view, what will the EU look like in 10 to 20 years? Ulva Johansson doesn't know that. No one knows. If you put a tool like this in the hands of people in power, tomorrow's people in power can use it for something else, and then it's too late to back out. Already today, the governments of four countries in the EU has been accused of spying on political opponents, and the reports of governments targeting journalists and activists is long. When talking about the risk of false flag material, she states, that risk will still exist. It would be minimal, I should say, but nonetheless, it will be there. And that's why I've included a special security measure so that no reports go directly to the police. Rather, they'll go first to the center we're going to create against sexual abuse of children. And that's like putting in a filter to preclude other material, which is not abuse. I've put in such a filter, you could say, so that it does not go to the police. Once again, 80-90% to 90 of mainly existing material has been found to be incorrect flagging. And secondly, why would you feel more comfortable with a large EU center reviewing private communications than the police? Such an organization would be huge and completely impossible to operate in a safe manner. If organizations can read private communications, sooner or later it will be leaked. This is why data gathering is dangerous, and it's the reason why it's incredibly important that end-to-end -end encryption won't be forbidden by law. My bill is not about encryption. It's not even mentioned. The bill has nothing to do with encryption. My bill is technology neutral. This is not a bill intended to break or weaken encryption. That's the important thing. It doesn't specify any particular technology. Neither do we exclude any specific technology in the bill. She states by saying it's not about encryption, and in the next breath says that encryption isn't excluded. Still, that doesn't top the following conversation between the host and Ulva. Can I just ask you one thing, Ulva? 
If that happens under this bill, would you and I be able to have contact in the future if, for example, you feel that you want to blow the whistle on the European Commission and contact Svenska Dagbladet under source protection regulations? And would we also be able to have encrypted contact that the authorities are unable to read with this bill? Yes, that goes without saying. But if that's the case, won't all pedophiles use the same encrypted messaging? And then what's been gained? No, but the thing is, the only thing that... The thing that sexual abuse of children, pictures of such, is always criminal. But if you and I would be able to encrypt our communications, then surely pedophiles would be able to encrypt theirs too. If that material is shared, it may be that it's detected that material. But then it's not encrypted. But it's not as if you are able to read someone's communication. And there are techniques to detect without breaking the encryption. I think it's very important that we defend the possibility and the right to encrypted communication. But that does not mean that we should say that as long as we use encrypted communication, we will not take steps to apprehend child sexual abuse. I'm a technology idiot, Ilva. This is how I understand it. If you send me pictures in encrypted documents, the authorities will not be able to read them. But if pedophiles send abuse images to each other, the authorities will be able to read them because there are technological solutions for that. That's how I understand it. Have I understood you correctly? No, you haven't. You can make a comparison. Because encrypted communication today is scanned by the companies. They scan all communications for viruses. So if you're on Signal and you want to send me a link to an interesting article, when you start typing the address of the article, a picture of the article pops up. Because they're scanning it. And that is to make sure that you aren't sending me any viruses. Okay, you can see the image, but it isn't encrypted. Kolle Emil, would you like to add to the conversation? That's not even how Signal works. The way Signal works is that if you get a preview, it's because your Signal client from your device is taking a picture of the website and including it in the message that's being sent. Signal, the company, has no access to this information. But that's not what I'm saying. You said that Signal works that way, which it doesn't. Now, with this in mind, I can understand why she is arguing that this proposal won't affect privacy and encryption, because she clearly has no understanding of what it actually entails. Now, considering if she should even be in that position of power in the first place is another thing. And on Thursday, the 14th September of 2023, it emerged that there is insufficient support in the Council of the European Union for her proposal. Worryingly, a day later, on September the 15th, the Commissioner commissioned a paid advertising campaign on X targeting the key countries that did not want to vote for the current proposal. The campaign, which has been viewed more than 4 million times, uses shocking images of young girls alongside sinister-looking men, ominous music, and commits a form of emotional blackmail by suggesting that opponents of the proposed legislation would not want to protect children. Equally misleading is its claim that the proposed legislation would be supported by the majority of Europeans based on a survey that highlighted only the benefits, but not the drawbacks of the proposed legislation. On the contrary, surveys by research firms which highlighted the drawbacks showed virtually no support for the proposal among the European population. I'm not going to go into how the study in question is biased and flawed, as Vera Wilde recently published an article going into detail about the topic, which I highly suggest reading for further information. And to make matters worse, the European Commission took it even further by trying to sway European public opinion. The following is an article by Danny McKick. X transparency report shows that the European Commission also used micro-targeting to ensure that the ads did not appear to people who care about privacy and Eurosceptics. For unclear reasons, people interested in Christianity were also excluded. After excluding critical political and religious groups, X algorithm was set to find people in the remaining population who were indeed interested in the ad message, resulting in an uncritical echo chamber. This micro-targeting on political and religious beliefs violates ex-advertising policy, the Digital Services Act, which the Commission itself has to oversee, and the General Data Protection Regulation. If there is insufficient support for a proposed legislation, the only proper democratic response is to withdraw it or change the proposal so that it does have sufficient support. Not by putting pressure on doubting member states and trying to bend the views of their citizens to its will with tactics eerily similar by disinformation campaigns during the US elections and Brexit. Such as the use of manipulative advertising, misleading statistics and micro-targeting based on religion and belief. The USA have already tried to wage war against cryptography for similar reasons during the 90s and its story gives us great insight in how flawed this course of action really is. With all of this said, this is not criticism against trying to protect children. However, the proposed method to achieve this is deeply flawed. 
Alternative proposals to manage the problem do exist, and a good resource giving an overview of the situation and proposed solutions can be found in the description, as well as all other sources. Thanks for listening and taking interest in all of our collective future.